Mandurah is a seaside town, about an hour's drive south of Perth. Not all that long ago, it was a small, quiet, beachside town, where locals from Perth went for their summer holidays. Looking at the region today, it's hard to believe that back in the 1970s there was so little development, and only scattered areas of suburbia. Today, it's a busy, crowded, bustling centre, where development has exploded, and it's become one of the fastest growing areas in Western Australia. Early canal housing developments were a great attraction for homeowners, but the desire to visit and settle in the area was always underpinned by the Peel Harvey estuary and the rivers that feed into the system. The busy city centre with shopping opportunities and a wide assortment of restaurants is offset by quiet, peaceful places all along the estuary foreshore. One of the few remnants of early settlement that can be seen in Mandurah today is Sutton's Farm. Unfortunately, this important heritage listed property is in private hands, and due to its location on the edge of a canal, it remains at risk of severe disruption from developers. At the time of making this video, there seem to be no clear plans for the use of this important historic site. One of the early pioneering families to settle in the area were the Halls, after which Halls Head was named. In general, they were an honest, hard-working family, but one of their number fell afoul of the law by stealing cattle. Frank Hall was the son of well-respected Henry Hall. The youngest of eight children, Frank was one of the first European children to be born in the colony. A muster of cattle on Frank's Manjimup property uncovered 80 cattle that had been rebranded or had had their earmarks altered. Just a week after his arrest, Frank managed to escape while being taken outside for exercise. A hundred pound reward was put on his head, but Hall managed to keep one step ahead of the law. He moved from the Vass area to York, but eventually the life of a bush ranger had lost its appeal, and he decided to surrender. He may have regretted this surrender because he was slapped with a 15-year sentence, of which he eventually served 11 years. Although popularly referred to as a bush ranger, Hall never robbed a bank or held up a stagecoach. He was a highly skilled bushman and cattle duffer, and made the great mistake of stealing from the rich. The Peel Harvey Estuary is twice the size of Sydney Harbour and is a popular recreation area right next to Mandurah. Boating, fishing and crabbing are all part of what draws people to the area. Houseboats can be rented to really experience the tranquil beauty of the waterways. During the warmer months, many people can be seen wading the estuary shallows in search of blue manor crabs. Mullet and prawns are also targeted by those keen on gathering a feed from nature. Europeans first explored the area in 1829, and early settlement started from 1830. Prior to that, the region was very important to the Aboriginal people as a source of food and was culturally very significant. The waterways that were so important to the Aboriginal people became a focus for the European settlers as a preferred place to build homes and as an easy means of travel and for the shipping of goods. Sadly, this led to the gradual displacement of the Aboriginal tribes who fiercely resisted the loss of their land, but it was a conflict that was never going to end in their favour.
a number of interesting attractions close to Mandurah, including the Peel Zoo, which is a little closer to Pinjarra. Here, you'll find an interesting collection of birds and mammals, as well as a number of native marsupials. It makes for a very pleasant day out, and is especially popular with children. Mays Miniature Park was formerly known as Abingdon Village. This is a charming place with miniature buildings scattered throughout a beautifully manicured garden. There is a hedge maze to find your way through and miniature golf to play. The grounds provide you with a self-guided tour past the ornamental lake and miniature steam and diesel trains, canals, locks and barges. Ice cream and hot coffee or cold drinks are available from the kiosk. Check out the Amaze website for opening times and prices. In the days of early European settlement, travel by water was preferred for moving goods. So although it may seem odd to find a mill located on an island where no vehicle can reach it, it did make perfect sense at the time. If you have a boat, you can access the island, as it's open to the public and has picnic and barbecue facilities available. It's located on the far western end of Kulinap Island, at the mouth of the Murray River. There are caretakers living on the island to ensure the safety of the historic buildings. Mm -hmm. 